Hey you guys, it's Nathan Collins back with another video. Today sharing with you my beginner's guide to Photoscape X and why I believe Photoscape X is an incredible alternative to Photoshop and many other photo editing softwares don't have as much bang for the buck as this free software delivers. And I'm gonna show you how to use it today and hopefully keep things quick and short so let's jump right into the video Photoscape X for beginners so to begin when you open up Photoscape you'll usually be greeted by this screen or the screen you were last editing on and on this home screen you're able to see some of the different tools or if there has if there's been an update recently they'll show maybe a new tool but you're able to go through here and watch some simple tutorials that can help you kind of get an idea of what some of the tools are and we're going to be going through this top line uh, from the viewer all the way to the tools and see what Photoscape X offers. So we're going to begin with the viewer. And viewer is where you're able to see all your different uh, folders. You're also able to favorite different folders. And you're also able to see your favorites as well as being able to look through other folders on your computer. And Today we're going to be looking at some of the photos that I've taken over the years, but also just how to do some simple edits to them and how to make them look even better. What you're also able to do is go into here and kind of put a star rating from one to five stars on your photos that actually stick with your photo so you're able to see, oh, this is a five star photo or, hey, this is one that I want to flag as a really good photo. And then you're able to also search in your, uh, you're able to search in the software. Oh, I want to see only the five star photos, and there they are. You're also able to double click into that and see the photo um, as large as you want. You're also able to see it in full screen or zoom in and check all the details, everything like that. Um, but all that is so you're able to see, okay, do I want to edit this image or do I want to like tag it or star it so I can save it for later? So that's what the viewer can do for you and being able to look through all those different photos and get it ready for an edit. So let's say you select what photo you want to edit and then you're going to be going into the editor. And when you click into the editor, you can do different things. You can actually open up a new like blank page. You're also able to look at these different presets and see, oh, I'm making an Instagram post or I'm making a uh, YouTube thumbnail. You're able to click that, click into it, and then you're able to start with just a blank canvas and then bring your photos in. And that would be using like the insert photo tool. But most of the time, what you'll be doing is you'll be going into the editor and you're gonna be hitting uh, either open or just double clicking on that photo. Or even in viewer, you can just click and say, oh, I want to jump into the editor. Uh, nonetheless, it's as simple as drag and drop. If you wanted to switch to a different photo, you totally can. So we're going to start with this one and just a cute turtle I saw while I was hiking. And I'm going to walk through what the editor uh, looks like and how it works. So let's begin. Uh, you have your photo selected. You're able to, of course, scrub through different folders and different photos if you want to switch to a new one. You're also able to click and just hide the tool completely. You're able to look down here and be able to see there is an undo tool and a redo tool. If you're trying to see, oh, did this search and change work for me if I want to go back and redo it. And you are able to, of course, zoom in and move around with the photo. Uh, but also that you have your save. And in the more tab, you're also able to have your save as or your save project. Save project is great because if you're in the middle of an edit and you gotta leave, but you don't want to just like, oh, save it and be done, you could save it as a project so you can go back and you can still undo your edits or redo your edits and not have to be completely done with your editing process. Uh, nonetheless, the save as is really great. You're able to save it to any folder, give it a name, and also choose what file type you want it as whether you want it as just a normal JPEG or a PNG or any of the other ones, which can give different benefits, and I can go over that in a future video. But for the editor, 
up here you have these different tabs and the one tab that kind of gets a little confusing is the insert tab because when you click that uh, you're able to see all these other ones that pop up but we'll cover that when we get there let's begin with the edit uh, tab so for the edit tab you're able to do some quick edits like rotating the image you're able to do things like straighten the image um, and just different ones that you'll like to play around with. You'll also be able to crop the image and pick like, oh, do you want it to be a square photo like for Instagram or something like that? Um, and let's say, oh yeah, you just wanted the head of the turtle. Yeah, you could do that and just hitting enter or hitting apply will do that for you and you can of course hit undo if you want to go back uh, to what it was before. You're also able to do what's called magic color which is just like an auto uh, color to kind of brighten up the photo or to make it more visually pleasing and that's just the software trying to guess what you think you're gonna want sometimes it works great sometimes uh, it leaves a lot to desire there's also like a compare button or you can of course tap the uh, just hold down the spacebar button and you're able to see what it was before and what it will be after uh, so compare or to just see what it was yeah, I'm going to cancel out of that since I'm not making any hard edits today. Uh, you're also able to just look through some of these other ones. There's Quick Menu, which is super powerful if you want to take the time to learn how to use it. There's also all these different adjustments, and the adjustments are great. There's a few that are a pro feature where you're able to see, oh, yeah, if I want to do this super interesting type of edit, oh, maybe there's a pro feature that you're missing, and that's a $40 one-time upgrade that you can get. But personally, I don't even have the uh, pro version because I believe this offers so much. And a lot of times you should save your money down the road for Photoshop if you're going really high into it. Or if you're saying, oh, I love Photoscape so much and I just want to stick with it forever. Yeah, maybe that upgrade would be worth it down the road. Uh, nonetheless, definitely play with it for a while to see if it's really something that you want to get. Uh, but for now, there's so many great tools, whether it's the sharpen tool, the blur tool, things like that. But yeah, definitely mess around in the edit tab where you're able to edit the entire photo just all at once. Uh, next, you have the color tool where you're able to just go through very specific things like if you want to brighten up the photo, deepen the photo, add a little bit of clarity so you're able to see some more of those details that may be uh, missing uh, that you might be like, oh man, I wish it was a little bit sharper. You can do some of those different things, adding contrast. Uh, things like that. Um, you're also able to, in the color tab, be able to see some different uh, uh, different tools like the auto color uh, and the auto contrast, HDR. And there's there are also some different pro tools like different masks that you can do as well. But that's something where you're able to just kind of go in and fine tune some of the colors that you're seeing. But once again, that's for the entire photo. Uh, not for individual sections of the photo. Next you have film, which is your like Instagram filters, being able to look through those. Um, but there's also some neat ones you're able to do if you wanted to do black and white and want to look at some of the different uh, overlays you're able to put on the photo to make it look more grainy, to look at, make it look more like a safari or whatever you're going for with your look. You're also able to change the strength of that, like the opacity, so you're able to make it not look as dramatic if you're wanting just a subtle effect and there's different types of ways that it's going to blend that uh, that into your photo whether you're doing just an overlay or you're doing like a soft light or like there's different ways to make it not look as dramatic um, and there's a lot of different like pro ones that you can get into but with what's offered in the free version I think it's a great uh, great value something that you're able to get a lot of use out of. So those are the different filters. If you want to use those, totally mess around, have fun with that. Next you have the light effects, which are able to add these different light beams in there. They're a lot of fun. You're also able to change like, oh, how many uh, dots am I gonna see? How big are the dots? Um, and also being able to see just the intensity of it and just being able to go back and compare what it looked like before to what it looks like after. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, different things like light leaks and things like that. Just stuff that you should definitely play around with. And just remember, a lot of it is simple click, drag, um, and just moving sliders. It's really simple to just play around with it. 
get some of your favorite photos into Photoscape and just begin playing around. You'll learn a ton. Uh, but yeah, definitely try out some of these different uh, fun effects. Next, frames. Frames are always a lot of fun to be able to just make photos look uh, whether you're looking to just add a different type of edging around it. Or for me, a lot of times I'll just go into, uh, yeah, there are shapes and things like that. But one of the things I love to do is to put a border on it if I'm adding it to like a photo, uh, adding it to like a video or to a website or something. You want some transparent background or you want some kind of way to distinguish it from the rest of the image if you're adding it onto an image. Sometimes having a border is helpful and being able to make the border as big or as small as you want. Being able to figure out, oh, do I want to be a circle or a square? And just knowing that if you apply one of these effects and you go to save this photo, you're able to save it and save as, and then go to save as as a PNG, and then you're going to be able to get it as a transparent photo. So instead of seeing it as the normal square photo, you actually have that transparent, that background that actually is able to be uh, transparent when you upload it to a website or you're doing different things you're able to have that uh, be a transparent image which for some people they're like how do I get that done I'll make a whole video on it down the road if you'd like that but yeah just let me know but those are the different frames uh, I'm gonna undo which you can use control Z or just the undo button on uh, the tab down there. Next, we're able to go to insert, which is one that gets a little bit on the confusing side, but basically this is inserting things into your image. So let's say uh, we want to insert an arrow. We can insert an arrow. Let's increase the thickness of that so you guys can see it a whole lot better. So we're able to add arrows here. We're able to change the color. We can make them a pattern. We can do all sorts of different effects on there. And it's a lot of fun. We're able to make put a square around here, do all sorts of just random interesting stuff. Uh, but it, what's neat is that in the insert thing, there is whether it's stickers, whether it's an image that you're going to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to put an image in here. This is one of the transparent images that I was showing you guys before uh, that I was explaining to you guys before. But you can put those different images or those different things into your photo, resize them, make them look as cool as possible. And just remember you can always undo or just X those different inserts and take them out. You can do different shapes. You can also do different text. And text is something that is really strong in Photoscape X because what you're able to do is you're able to make a ton of different adjustments and... Uh, be able to also just transform what your text looks like. So I would definitely encourage you guys just to look at it a ton because you can do all these different like uh, effects or different shapes or sizes and just adding different fonts. It's a lot of fun. Uh, magnifier, uh, ma the magnifier is great as well because what you're able to do is, let's see, I must, uh, let's say you wanted to magnify a certain part of the image. You can do that and like select a certain part and move it over so you're able to see what part is magnified. I think it's a lot of fun to be able to have these different uh, tools just at your disposal. So you're like, oh, wow, that's actually kind of neat to have something like a magnifier uh, just built right into the software there. Also, you're able to do different things like you're able to blur a certain part of the image. Uh, so just being able to blur, like let's say the face you wanted to blur or you want to blur a certain portion of the photo, you can do that. But yeah, it's just those different filters you're able to add in, just different uh, overlays that you're able to insert into your image. Next, you have tools. Tools are great because this is where you're able to get into the actual fine-tuning of specific parts of the photo. So this is where you're able to have things like your draw tool, and there's all sorts of different brushes and sizes with that. Um, you're able to get into things like the Spot Heal tool. Let me go back and remove that blur. Uh, spot Healing tool, which I've made a, to a full video on. But basically, if there's a part of the photo that you don't want, you can remove that part. So let's say 
uh, for this photo in particular. Actually, I might switch off to a different photo. This will be a good explanation for it. So let's look at this duck. Um, whoa, hold on. So what you're able to do is with the spot healing brush, you're able to increase the size to whatever you want to be. And I can go and click on this entire, you know, baby duckling. Um, and I'm able to remove the entire duck from the photo. Here's what it looked like before. Here's what it looks like after. So if for some reason you wanted there to only be one duck, you can do that. If you think, oh wait, what if I just want to remove this duck over here? Let's remove that one. And sometimes it works perfectly. Sometimes it's a little bit finicky. But like in this case, it's simply removing these uh, little ducklings so if I wanted to, I could make it look like, oh wow, this duck is completely alone and destitute from the world. Isn't that so sad? And sometimes it takes a little while to think. Sometimes there's a little bit of uh, like random parts left over. So like we'll have to go back through and just click through that stuff again. But honestly, it comes out looking really nice. So if you want to make it look like, oh, you got just one duck versus... Um, the whole group, you can make that change, that edit, and you're able to make it look uh, pretty convincing, in my opinion. That's one of the reasons I absolutely love uh, photo editing. You're able to have the software try to guess, oh, what are you trying to remove by selecting, and just remembering, it's just left clicking, and you're clicking in, and you're removing that object. So, made a full video on that. Absolutely love the tool. It's great. Uh, there's also some other things that I really enjoy. Here's a fun photo that I took. Uh, I just love uh, these different flowers. I think they look cool. Uh, but let's say for some reason these flowers, they aren't bright enough or not as exciting enough. There's an adjust color in the tools tab and what you're able to do is you're able to go and select a certain part of the image and it's going to highlight a red of which parts you're selecting. Then it's going to be able to brighten that part of the image or let's say if we go to darken this will make it pretty simple to see uh, to brighten it to darken it to make it more vibrant you're able to add these different things in there and it's only the parts that you are selecting so it's not the entire image it's just those specific spots and once again just look through those different tools because there's so many fun tools that you could probably use but it's kind of on a case-by-case what is going to be helpful for the kind of photos you're going to be editing. So with all that being said, you guys, that is the edit. Um, that's the edit tab. And now we're going to go to the cutout tab, which is kind of an interesting uh, type of tab. Uh, but like I'm saying, it's the viewer, the editor, and then the cutout Cutout is kind of an interesting thing. Let's use, oh, let's see. Do I have a photo that would work well for this? Here is the photo. And what we're able to do here is cut out the background image. So what you're able to do, and I have the tolerance set at 50. You're just selecting a part of the image. And then it's going to remove that part, that specific piece of the photo. And then it's also going to remove all the other uh, parts of the photo that are next to it that are of a similar color. So if you have the tolerance really low, you click it, it'll just do kind of spots and that's removing that from the image. Or let's say I go back and I move it to like that 50, I'm able to click there and it's able to remove a huge chunk of the image. Uh, but sometimes it ends up doing too much, like in this case it's removed part of my fingernail. And there's different ways to get around that issue. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go back, drop the tolerance down a little bit, going to click around, and I was able to save that fingernail, and it looks pretty good. So what I'm also able to do is uh, use the lasso and the brush tool to help remove even more. So I'm just clicking through, and I'm removing those different parts. One thing that's helpful is they have these different filters in here where you're able to see, oh, what are the different things that have been removed how does what does it look like and you're able to remove all that different stuff make sure that you're getting uh, your image 
uh, properly. It's more like a green screen effect is what you're ending up with. And then what you're able to do is uh, look at that from the original where it had a background, where now it doesn't have a background. And what you're able to do is you're able to go in, save that. It saves as a PNG. I'll just save it to my desktop to show you guys. So when you're done with that, you're able to just click right in and you're able to see this photo now does not have a background to it like it used to have before we did this cutout. And what you're able to do is then you're able to maybe add that in to another photo down the road. So like, let me just do that for you real quick. So let's say you got this going. Uh, let's put it into the editor. And what you're able to do is let's say you're adding text to this photo and you jump in and you're like, okay, I'm going to add my text and it's going to look like that. So let's say I'm doing, this is the Joby K, uh, let's see, let's say this is the Joby K1 and let's make it, uh, let's just keep it white. Um, and what you're able to do is you're able to go back in and say I'm going to go to insert, I'm going to go to images, I'm going to go find that image, I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to insert it. I'm going to line it back up with my photo and I'm going to be able to make sure I uh, set the scale of it to 100% line it up it goes right over and then there it is it's covering over the text that you have versus what it would have been if you just would have added it, it gives kind of a professional effect cutout is a great tool um, sorry that took a little while but it's important to be able to see what each of these tabs are and yeah cutouts a little bit more advanced batch is really fun because what you're able to do is you're able to say oh yeah here's uh six eight ten however many photos you want and you say oh yeah i want to add this color effect or i want to add this film effect so let's go to this film effect i like let's say i like this one apply and then that's going to apply that effect to everyone so that gives that warmer tone um, makes it looks pretty neat and it's going to be able to edit all of them at one time you'll be able to hit save and you're going to be able to save all of them all at one time saves a lot of time if you know that you're wanting to make a certain change or edit to a batch of photos collage collage makes a lot of sense what you do is you just select two photos one two and they look great uh, you can move and adjust them around there's all these different kind of side by side or these picture-in-picture picture, uh, look-alike type of uh, collages you're able to also increase the size in there and I think it's a fun little thing that you're able to do if you're making an Instagram post and you're wanting to kind of showcase something and you're trying to put a totally different image in and maybe that just works out for you from time to time you're also able to do the combine tool which is super fun because you're able to put one photo in and then you're able to put another photo in as well and what you're able to do is you're able to add these different images in sometimes it looks you know super great sometimes it's kind of you know confusing and like how do I make this all look right but just like if you were trying to combine some photos in for a collage for Instagram or for Facebook or for wherever you're posting you're able to do that and you're able to make it look pretty good um, and when you export it'll save it all just as one photo and you're able to adjust and move these around add a border things like that and uh, keep things looking uh, pretty good so with that being said let's move on to the create gif create gif is kind of a fun one uh, let's see if I have any fun photos that are taken in a series here's a perfect setup for that so let's take these three photos this girl's you know spinning around and you're able to save that and it saves as a, a GIF or a GIF depending on who you are um, it's going to show those photos and you're able to do oh how long is the duration how fast is it gonna be um, and it's really interesting to be able to make those different edits and changes uh, you're able to put in a transition effect which I think it's gonna be really weird if it's really fast Nonetheless, it's a fun thing to do 
um, if you are someone who makes those different gifts, uh, maybe sending them around. But it's better than to use just stock gifts if you're trying to be a little bit more creative. Uh, prints are a lot of fun because that's when you actually get them printed and you're able to get them actually into the real world. Uh, but what you're able to do is be able to select different photos if you're going to print them in like a wallet size or some of those different like six by uh, four by six or some of those different uh, sizes and you're able to of course select your printer you're able to make sure they're all posted on there the way that you want them uh, but those different changes are a whole lot of fun when you're able to actually see them printed out and see how your edits turned out next at the end you have tools and in tools it's as simple as uh, one two three you have the screen capture which is like if you wanted to capture what's on your screen save the entire screen of your computer as um, just a photo to be able to uh, maybe send it to me and say hey why in the world is this messing up I can't don't understand this part of Photoscape or maybe you just want to showcase what you've been working on uh, you're able to click that and it's able to take a full photo you're also able to do this color picker which I'm super happy with you're able to click it and it you can pick anywhere on the entire interface of your computer so let's say oh wow, I really like the blue that's in uh, this editor or for whatever reason you're able to click it and it's able to pick that color for you and you're able to save that color so you'll be able to add that into your photos if you're going to use that as like the color of your text something like that but it works out super well to be able to have that color picker uh, you're also able to rename which is able to help you to be able to uh, when you save your photos to have them renamed to a certain like oh edited in photoscape uh, type of thing and it makes it uh, a whole lot easier to kind of organize your photos that are unedited to your photos that are edited so that's all the different tabs in photoscape X uh, there's also over here a quick settings which you're able to look through you're able to change the theme to like uh, let's see you're able to change it to the light theme which I think is kind of blinding you're also able to change it to the dark theme which is what uh, I believe is standard and what I enjoy using there's some other uh, ways you're able to edit and do some changes to the, the software itself um, but besides that that is Photoscape X just a quick look and I hope a good beginners guide for you guys uh, thank you so much for hanging in there for checking out this video and let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or what you would like me to dive in deeper in in a future video but nonetheless you guys thank you so much god bless and have a great day